So I'm here today with David Reed from Time Well Spent Games, and I'm going to be asking him a few questions and getting to know him a little bit. So how are you doing today, David? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing pretty well. Now, uh, the first question I have is I saw a post where uh, the old owner of Time Well Spent Games, because you're not the original owner. The, I am not, no. The, the original owner, after 12 years, said that they're closing the store, and it seems like that's the opportunity which you saw, and you jumped in and uh, purchased the company. Now you're the new owner. Can you give me your version of the origin story? <laughs> um, yeah, so I had ordered a ton of games from, and funnily enough, his name is Dave, too. Um, yep. <laughs> but I had ordered from him and talked to him lots um, over the years. And yeah, when I saw that he was announced he was closing, I, he did a big sale at the end and I went and picked up a bunch of stuff and then talked to him and kind of half jokingly mentioned, you know, thinking if he was thinking about selling mm -hmm. and he said, well, it's possible. So we just started talking and one thing led to another and we ended up buying it. So it kind of, kind of fell into our laps. We weren't really planning on buying a business at the time, but it kind of <laughs> too, opportunity was too good fast. So. So is that something where you were working at a full-time job before and then this became your full-time or was it like part-time, part-time? Yeah, sort of. I had, well, I've been in the, actually the scuba industry for like the last 20 years. Um, and about a couple of years before that, I had gone part-time to stay home with the kids. Mm. Um, so I was kind of already home, um, figured we would buy this and I would just kind of work on it out of the home for a while. Um, so sort of full-time, but not really. So. Right. And uh, from my understanding, you don't have like a local game store presence, like a physical store, but you do have a warehouse that you uh, hold everything and ship it out of. Right. Home. We have a warehouse right now. It's a temporary thing. Um, ultimately, the goal is to have a storefront somewhere. Um, we're just slowly working up to it. We're trying to do it without loans. So that's okay. that's the big hurdle. And whether that'll work out or not, we don't know. But we are ultimate, the ultimate goal is to get a storefront, yes. So how close are you to that? <laughs> what, what's your Not estimation? Really as close as I'd like, but is this like months away, years away? What What are you thinking? Probably at least a year away still. So, but okay. we're getting there. It's well, it's slow, slow and sure, but yeah. I mean, doing it without loans just within a year or so that sounds like a pretty awesome deal to be able to pull I hope that so. off. We'll see. Yeah. You know, <laughs> no promises, but we yeah. do a lot of local stuff. Like we do about six or so conventions every year, local mm -hmm. conventions. So we're still out there and we're, you know, people that know us. And so that's our local presence right now is really that. But Okay. And can you tell me like how much sales you get through the conventions versus online? Like what's your distribution of revenue? Um, really, the conventions are probably, well, conventions and locals are probably about 70, 75% of oh. what we do. Uh, we do a lot of online, but not. We, there's more locals so because we've been fostering that you know we offer local right. discounts and stuff for people that do local pickups and stuff so we're trying to foster that local local community a little bit more that makes sense um so what is your big vision for the future you talked about the opening the physical store do you want to grow your online presence or do you, your own conventions what kind of stuff do you have in the future yeah i don't want to get involved in conventions <laughs> and as far as running i've seen that side <laughs> that, was, okay. that was like a nightmare so no i don't want to do that but I don't know. I mean, I think even once we have a storefront, we'll still do the conventions because we have a blast at them. We always have a good time talking to people. You know, it's a good time to go and see some games played and stuff like that. Um, other than that, I, I don't know. I don't know yet. Our, you know, our next big hurdle and our next big goal is to get that storefront. And we'll just take it from there after that, see what our next goal after that is. Okay. So I think that's a great thing to have a local presence and foster that because that really creates good friendships and community mm -hmm. uh, with your online store. What do you, what do you have that you think sets you apart from the other online stores that are out there? Cause there's so much competition. Do you have something that you think sets you apart? You know, I don't know. I've tried. So one of his big things when the previous owner's big thing was he was really good about getting the imports in. Um, and it seems like, what do you mean by getting the imports in? Well, so when he started, you know, mm -hmm. 10 years ago, it was, if a game came out, sometimes it came out in Germany and wasn't oh, okay. available here, or if it was going to be available, it was going to be a year or so. Okay. He was always really good about bringing it in, and you had to pay a premium on it, but he would bring it in, and then you could have it immediately. Mm -hmm. The industry seems to have changed a little bit on that, in that there is much less of a time frame 
between if something comes out in Germany, and there are exceptions, of course, but if something comes out in Europe or somewhere else in the world, and it, it's a much smaller window now of when it's opened or when it's released in the States. So that, that market has kind of dwindled a little bit, it looks like, and for, at least from the research I've done. Mm -hmm. um, so that was what he set him apart. I'm still trying to figure out if that's, try to figure out a niche that'll work for me. Um, okay. I don't know. We've been getting really big into, we're trying to do a lot of the Kickstarter stuff and maybe that, I don't know. So it's, it's hard. You know, it's like you say, it's too hyper, hyper competitive and really hard to try to find what you're good at. <laughs> yeah. So. So tell me more about this Kickstarter thing. Are you, what's your opinion on Kickstarter for the industry and for your business? Well, I mean, Kickstarter is great for getting those small companies, getting their, and small, you know, individuals getting their, we've, we've backed and brought in a lot of locals. Um, mm -hmm. So a lot of the Denver locals that have done stuff, we have one coming out that's um, um, Tasty Humans is coming out very shortly. That's by a local guy that was, so we backed that. We that we we try to do as many locals as possible but just in general um you know like the um elder veil the dwellings of elder veil we've got coming in so just let me know the game big games that look good we're just mm -hmm. seeing if that's going to be a market for us that we can try to tap a little bit for those that miss the kickstarter um right. the challenge and potentially the risk is that it, because it is a kickstarter a lot of people that want it are in on it so mm -hmm. i don't know I don't, it's, it's something we're trying we'll see if it works out or not um, yeah, I, I would feel that there's at least enough of an audience for the the feeling of they missed out and they were waiting for retail release and maybe that didn't happen because they didn't get enough backing. So that does seem like a, a cool angle. I mean, I know just as a Kickstarter <clears throat> backer myself, there have been a lot of times I've gotten involved in the hype, mm -hmm. gotten something, and then it hasn't been great. Or the reverse is more true sometimes where because I've been burned, on games that I'm like, oh, that looks really cool, get it, and like very lukewarm about it. I, I've waited, and then it's either not available in retail, or you have to go through the secondhand market, or whatever. And I've gotten, I've, I've missed out on some of those. So, so yeah. that's what we're hoping to see, help with is to be able to have an opportunity for those that have missed it. Uh, we'll see. Okay. Uh, another industry thing that's been happening recently is the board game cafe, board game bars market has been growing a lot recently. What are your thoughts there? Uh, we love it. We work very closely with a couple of places. Um, we helped. There's a place in town called um, Board Ga or Game Train that we mm -hmm. helped stack. Basically, we helped them stock their gaming library. Um, there's one that we've worked really closely with, Board Game Republic. That one was started with by Keith Meyer, who um, has designed a number of games, like the Hobbit game and a few other things. Um, so, we, yeah, I, we love that. Um, we go around as many of them as we can certainly in town, um, mm -hmm. because they're popping up all over the place. And it's awesome, I think. So what do you think the big difference? Like, why would you want to open just a local game store versus a board game cafe? Um, really, because I don't want to get involved in the food slash drink <laughs> industry. I did okay. that for years. And I, I don't want to be involved in them. You know, that's, that's not an industry I, I want to be in. Um, okay. And it would make it better to be a board game cafe. But you still have the nightmares of running a restaurant basically and i don't want to do that i see yeah it's almost like you're you got two businesses at that point so you'd have to be good at a lot of different kinds of things which could be pretty hard okay. yeah so uh this is kind of a your personal take but what are some games that you're excited about that you haven't played yet that are up and coming or that just released um well tapestry is one big one i okay. uh I'm really looking forward to trying it. I haven't had a chance to play that one. I've got it in. I just haven't had a chance. I'm, I haven't opened one yet. You know, it's one of those that I, the, my biggest challenge owning this business is not opening one of everything that comes in. <laughs> so I've had to limit myself, um, especially sense. things that might sell well. So that's a big one that I'm looking forward to. Um, we have played, um, though, another Kickstarter that we got in was Coloma, and we've played that one quite a bit. We liked that one. That one's a great one. Hmm. Um, what else? Uh, yeah, I, I, there's, there's a lot coming out all the time. We've actually, we're working through right now a, um, it's an older one, but the Betrayal Legacy. Okay. Doing that. And that's been a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Clank Legacy that just came out. I, I get, can't wait to try. So. 
Now, do you have like a genre of games? Like, do you like legacy style games that uh, you play more? What what kind of games do you like? We try to try as many of the legacy games as possible because it's a unique thing that we, you know, it's one of the not a unique thing, but it's one of those. It's a genre that we enjoy, um, mm-hmm. and it's interesting to see everyone's take on it. Although a lot of them have been by the same guy, but it's been fun to try them all um, and see to see what the differences of them are. So we. Like the Clank one, I've got a really good friend that works for Direwolf, and he was integral in it, so I'm really excited to try that one. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, uh, so Legacy is a big one, but not, I wouldn't say it's the uh, majority of what we play, just because it takes, you have to have a certain number of people, and you have to have the same people, and that sort of thing, at least more often than not. So. Okay, that makes sense. So uh, I'm just thinking back to the beginning of the conversation when uh, you purchased Time Well Spent Games. If you were looking back, and talking to your previous self, would you give the advice to go through with it? Or what What do you think you would do with retrospect? Oh, absolutely. I think we would still go through with it. Um, it's been a blast doing it. Um, there are definitely mistakes we made going into it, just financial mistakes and various choices we made that we probably shouldn't have. But bottom line, yes, we would still have done it, I think. so. Okay. Now, if there's like an aspiring local shop owner that or someone that wants to open up their own store, maybe physical online or something like what, what piece of advice is, would you have? Um, well, do your research, um, find out what they've done, you know, see if that's something they can go forward, make sure you have the funding to do it. Um, that was for the first year or so. That was our biggest hiccup was that, like I said, mm-hmm. we bought it when we were planning on buying a business. So we, we, tapped into some savings and stuff like that to do. Um, but the, if it's, you know, it depends. If you're doing an online thing, the, what you have to stock for is completely different than what you have to stock for if you're a brick and mortar, you know? Cause if you're doing an online, you've got to kind of have something of everything that comes out. Mm-hmm. Cause you don't know what people are gonna want, or what are gonna be looking for when they come to you. And it's not like a brick and mortar where if, if they come to you and they're looking for something and you don't have it, they just go onto the next site. You know, mm-hmm. whereas brick and mortar, there are other things that they can put their hands on and look at. So it's di- it's two totally different markets. We're kind of in this limbo land in between them right now. Um, so it's it's been interesting. But, yeah, uh, just make sure you know where you're going forward and which which route you want to go and then just go for it. So OK, that sounds great. Now, if people want to find out more, visit your site, uh, what's the website address for them to go get that? The website is timewellspentgames.com. Um, you can it, email me at info at timewellspentgames.com. Um, our phone number is 303-862-1224. Um, and you can text or call that. So, yeah, um, I'm happy to talk to anybody who wants to chat. We're on Facebook it's, as well, but under Time Well Spelt Games. So. Nice. And what's the next convention you're going to? Uh, there is one in town called Genghis Khan. Um, it is in January. No, I'm sorry. Hexacon is in January. It's one that started about two years ago, and it's been going really well. It's a purely gaming convention, um, so it is kind of right up our alley, and we've had a blast with it. So that's our next one, and then the f- month after that is Genghis Khan. So. Very cool. Well, is there anything else that you'd want to share with listeners? I don't think so. Thanks for having me. It's always good. Con- you know, let me know if you have any questions or comments or anything. I'm happy to talk. So. Very cool. Well, I'll put all the links to what you just shared below so that people can find you easily. And uh, thanks for coming on and talking with me. Thank you for having me.